In 1809, Joseph Lewis Gay Lussac observed that pressure of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call the pressure law, and in this session, we shall describe an experiment to verify it. Coming up. Before we get into the experiment, I would like to first explain the mathematical description of this law. Remember, I, like I had said in the introduction, that the pressure law simply states that the pressure of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature provided the volume is held constant. So mathematically, this is how we would write it. And to remove this proportionality constant, it would mean that pressure is going to be equal to, now we introduce a constant, a constant of proportionality, let's call it K, times the temperature. And so when we are to make K the subject of the formula, P over T is going to be equal to K, K being the constant of proportionality. Now, when comparing the same substance under two different conditions, then this equation can be ex used in this kind of way. That P1 over T1 is going to be equal to P2 over T2. Now, we'll go ahead and describe the experiment to verify the pressure law. Now, just like the pressure law states, it simply states that the pressure of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So, so it means that when you're looking at an experiment like this, what we are trying to investigate is the relationship that is existing between pressure and temperature of a gas. So when you look at this setup, we are having a thermometer here, we are having this star. Of course, this star is meant to make sure that there is an even distribution of heat in this water. In here, we have some dry air and of course, right down here is how we are going to, this is where we are going to heat this liquid from. As we heat this liquid, we stir this liquid so that the heat is evenly distributed. When this heat is evenly distributed, we are able to tell the temperature of this liquid by this thermometer and of course the temperature of this liquid is the same temperature that is exhibited in this dry air. So in a way we will be able to know the temperature or that, that is affecting this dry air and also the pressure of that dry air. And when we compare those two, we will be able to verify the pressure law. So if I may state how we do this experiment logically or chronologically, I would say that a gas bulb is, is heated in a water bath. This is the water bath we are talking about. And so we heat this liquid and uh, we get the temperature of this gas, the temperature of this water bath. And of course, when we get the temperature of the water bath, that will be the temperature of the dry air. And we go ahead and record the corresponding pressure to this, to the temperature right here. Of course, this experiment is repeated. You heat, you keep, re, um, you keep, you keep adjusting the temperature of this water bath. And whenever you record a new temperature of this water bath, you read and record it and also record the corresponding pressure. And after that, you plot a graph of pressure against temperature. Upon plotting a graph of pressure against temperature, we are able to obtain a straight line. As we see, a, st a straight line, but it doesn't go through the origin. Which straight line well can be extrapolated up to the point of temperature where the temperature here is to negative 273 degrees Celsius. So again, now, if I may... We, we can go ahead and find the slope of this graph. Let's take a case in point that this is pressure at an unknown temperature theta. This is pressure at P naught. Uh, let's call this one here. At this point, pressure is zero. Uh, then also here at this point, temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So now we are going to find uh, the slope of this graph using this point and that point, then find the slope of this graph using this point and that point, and then we shall equate the two expressions to get another expression that we will be talking about shortly. Of course, in trying to find the, the, the slope of this graph, we know that the method, the method for slope is change in y over change in x. So in this case here, if we want to find the slope using this we have to get the change in y over the change in x. The change in y in this case is p theta minus p naught. Well, that's the change in y. Divide that by the change in x, which so happens to be 
this let's call this uh, temperature at an unknown temperature theta theta minus the temperature zero so it's minus theta over zero the slope using these two points is the same slope when we use these two points a change in y over change in x so the change in y here is p naught minus zero which is p naught minus zero divided by change in x which is zero minus negative 273 and of course when we when we go ahead and calculate this we end up with this expression when we do that p theta minus p naught over p naught theta is going to be equal to 1 over 273 this expression is identical to the expression we did, we arrived at in our previous session when we were talking about the volume coefficient at constant pressure now in this case since here we are dealing with an expression whereby we are dealing with pressure the pressure law and we, are to, we know that when it comes to the pressure law the condition for the pressure law to work we are supposed to be holding the volume constant it means that this expression is here we are able to even identify that the fractional increase in the pressure of a fixed mass of a gas when the volume is constant is 1 over 273 so from that we are able to conclude that the volume coefficient at constant pressure is the same as the, the pressure coefficient at constant volume or if I may break it down further it's the same as saying that the fractional increase in the volume of an object at constant pressure for every degree Celsius rise in temperature is the same as the fractional increase in pressure at zero degree Celsius for every degree Celsius rise in temperature at constant volume for a gas and that is all that same figure is 200 1 over 273This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.